Hey guys, Hunter Labrada here. Today, I'm gonna to be taking you through a brutally quick three exercise calf workout. It's gonna be high rep, quick paced, and aimed at maximum hypertrophy. We're gonna start with standing calf raises. From there, we're gonna move on to seated calf raises. Finally, to finish it up, we're gonna move on to one-legged leg press calf raises. So the first exercise we're gonna be performing today is a standing calf raise. We're gonna be performing five sets of 30 repetitions, with the last two sets being a triple drop set. The reason we're gonna be doing slightly higher reps to start out for this workout is your calf muscles unlike any other muscle in your body and that all day long, every step you take, you're using your calf. So it takes significantly more stimulation and significantly more reps to train than any other muscle that I've found in my experience. Your calf is actually made up of a couple different muscles. You have the gastrocnemius, which is the muscle that most people assume is the calf muscle. And then you have what's called the soleus. The gastrocnemius is best trained with your leg joint locked out, your leg joint being your knee locked out. You can assure that you lock this joint out by contracting both your quads and your glutes when performing your standing calf raises. What this is going to do is it's going to isolate the gastrocnemius, take the soleus out of the equation, and make your body very rigid taking away the injuries you might sustain to your lower back. You might also notice that in the video I was wearing a belt. That's just another step and precaution to take in keeping your lower back nice and firm and straight. When performing these triple drop sets, it's imperative that you keep the time that you take to drop the weight in between the sets as minimal as possible. Ideally, you'll have a training partner there to strip the weight for you or be using a pin selectorized machine where it takes very, very short amount of time to drop the weight. Worse comes to worse and you have to make do and do it like I did on a standing Smith machine. Just bust ass and get around there and take the plates off and get right back on there and get after it. But you want to keep the rest periods down and you don't want to take time in between them to recover. The last two sets of the triple drop set serve to be able to keep the weight high because you want to keep the weight high enough to be stressing the muscle and breaking down the muscle fibers, but you're unable to perform a set all the way through with heavy enough weight to do that. So the last two sets being the triple drop sets, you'll hit 10 reps at a weight that you can barely hit 10 reps at, drop it again to a weight you can barely hit 10 reps at, and finally finish up with a weight you can get another 10 at. This should not be comfortable, it should not be enjoyable, it will hurt, but it will give you results. Moving on to the seated calf raises, the reason we perform the seated calf raises is to train the soleus. The soleus is activated whenever your knee is at a bent angle. So, unlike the standing calf raises where we're going out of the way to make sure the knee joint is as locked as possible, when we do the seated calf raise, you're going to want to have an angle in the knee. Obviously, you're going to be seated doing it. Something to keep in mind when doing your seated calf raises is you don't want to hyperextend your Achilles at the bottom. Once you get past a certain point, all of the tension is taken off the soleus and placed entirely on your Achilles. You can kind of see this indicated by whenever you're at the bottom of your rep, whenever your feet start rolling in, that's kind of transitioning from the soleus to the Achilles tendon. It serves no purpose in muscle growth and it causes a lot of undue stress on that tendon. Another thing to keep in mind when training your calves is that it's really important to get a good contraction at the top. You'll notice that when I'm performing these workouts, I almost perform a double clutching rep at the top. I'll get as high as I can normally, I'll let it sit there for a second, and then I'll really force it to contract. And I might only get an inch higher when I do that, but it's really forcing a full contraction out of the muscle. Doing that, like any other exercise and using any other machine, it allows you to use a little less weight while placing additional stress on the muscle, which is what we're after. It's imperative that throughout the workout you keep the rest periods under 60 seconds, optimally being around 45 seconds. If you're training with someone, it should be as long as it takes them to do their set, and then it's NASCAR pit crew style to get on there, get your weight set, and for you to do your set.
Moving on from there, we're gonna finish up with one-legged leg press calf raise. The reason we do it one-legged is, you know, throughout the workout, you might get more and more fatigued on one side or the other, so it's just one good way to ensure at the end of the workout that you really are able to thump both sides equally. In addition to that, when you perform the seated leg press calf raises, you're neither straight nor bent with your knee. There's a very slight angle in it, so you've already attacked the gastric nemus by doing it standing. You've attacked the soleus by doing it seated. So the finisher is gonna be the leg press one-legged calf raise. You're isolating each side and you're isolating both muscles that are already worn down. So it's a great finisher for any calf workout and one that I really enjoy. A question I get asked often is how often to train your calves. Any calf workout, including this one, I believe can be used up to two times a week. If you are truly training the calves to failure, they will be sore for two to three days after you train them. That being said, I do believe it is a muscle that requires more than a once a week training split because of how often the muscle gets used throughout the day and throughout the week, as I've previously stated. You do have to go above and beyond to really get growth out of them. It's a lot of work and it hurts, but my calves have grown tremendously and I've brought them up from a weak point to a strong point by doing so. So don't be scared of training your calves more than once a week. You will reap the rewards. To implement this workout into your split, I have two different recommendations. If you want to include it on your leg day, I really strongly recommend you start with your calves. By starting with your calves and doing this workout, you might not have as much energy to train your legs. So it's definitely gonna be a prioritization of calves if you employ it that way. If you aren't looking to diminish the performance of your quads and hamstrings due to the fact that you're missing energy because of how hard this workout is, I would definitely recommend using it on its own standalone day or tacking it onto a workout that doesn't involve your lower half, such as shoulders, back, or chest. For the full workout breakdown, and the tips and tricks that are included with each exercise, be sure to check out the page below. If you have any questions about the workout, or nutrition and exercise in general, don't hesitate to send me a message on BodySpace. My username is Hunter Labrada, all lowercase, no spaces. For more articles and videos like this, keep on coming back to bodybuilding.com.